Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Gino and RS. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. A few quick things to mention before we get into the upheaval taking place at Tesla right now. Tesla announced their Model S plaid sports seats. Just a good sign Tesla is still investing resources into their flagship products. If you're new, Tesla actually manufactures their own seats, something most automakers do not do. And although S and X are a small part of overall volume, it's nice having those flagships for three and Y buyers to eventually be able to upgrade to. Having them available does slightly boost margins and it also provides that halo effect for Tesla having these higher performance vehicles. To date, I had been taking Elon at his word when it came to the price of FSD. In May 2020, he said it'll continue to rise as the software gets closer to FSD capability with regulatory approval. At that point, the value of FSD is probably somewhere in excess of $100,000. But as with many things in life things change. Now the question becomes, what will this do to the take rate? Sadly, that data has been pretty opaque from Tesla. I know a lot of people complain about the $12,000 one-time price, especially now relative to the new monthly option, but if Tesla does solve autonomy here in the next two years, that $12,000 purchase will seem like a steal. With that said though, given the current state of affairs, I do honestly think Tesla should allow those that paid $12,000, the early adopters, the OG Tesla supporters, the option to transfer that to a new vehicle. I know Tesla has made that offer two different times during set months, but not everybody is ready to buy a new car during those set months. I will say just because the current window of Tesla allowing those FSD transfers is closed, that does not mean they won't reopen it sometime in the future. I'm just saying in general, I'm in favor of companies doing the right thing for their most ardent supporters over the long run. And I agree, as an adult, we all decide to spend money on certain things and we have to live with the outcome. But in this case, with the subscription payoff timeline going from five years before to 10 years now, I think it would be nice for Tesla to do something for those that paid the 12,000 upfront. I think most of us would agree if we put ourselves in those shoes, having spent $12,000 and then feeling stuck, you can't even transfer it to a new vehicle while everybody else celebrates $99 a month, certainly not ideal. Yu Xu, an NVIDIA engineer, was talking about FSD 12.3.4. He said the human-like driving maneuvers with no interventions delivered a magical experience, but it was by no means flawless. Excited to witness the recipe of scaling law and data flywheel for full autonomy, showing signs of life in real products. The future of end-to-end -end robot learning is bright. Jim Fan, a researcher at NVIDIA said, what excites me the most about Grok 1.5 is the potential to solve edge cases in self-driving. With Tesla AI's highly mature data pipeline, it's not hard to label tons of edge cases. You can then use those to fine tune Grok to be used for multimodal FSD reasoning. There were previous efforts on similar ideas, but Tesla is spinning an unparalleled data flywheel that could scale far beyond. I thought that was worth sharing because Elon replied saying, two sources of data scale infinitely, synthetic data, which has an is it true problem and real world video, which does not. Thus, this is another potential tie in between Tesla and XAI, actually having Grok version 1.5 plugged into in some capacity, the FSD stack. With the new version of Grok being able to interpret images and scenes, they're saying Grok could help Tesla's FSD make certain decisions like, where can we go from the current lane or do we have enough space to drive around the gray car? Absolutely no guarantees here, but definitely a storyline to watch. In case any of you out there are stuck on the 2024.8.x branch, Rohan Patel did say this should be solved within the next few days. He said that cohort, which is about 12% of the total fleet, should have the most updated build this coming week. To everybody out there that's already received FSD version 12.3.4, let me know what your initial experience has been. I'm going to withhold my review until probably next week. Phil Duan, an engineer at Tesla said, love getting feedback from ex-autopilot employees. This is just the beginning. He shared a text that said, I'm sure you guys are going absolutely crazy right now, but I was just testing out self-driving with my parents and their Tesla and I'm so unbelievably impressed. Did my first Waymo ride a few days ago and this was miles better. On the $99 a month for FSD, all we know for sure is that Tesla is most likely no longer compute constrained. There does seem to be a significant shift to refocusing, doubling down on autonomy. And given the progress of version 12, it's likely the Tesla execs want a wider audience to have access to this 
FSD now that they're no longer compute constrained. Here we have a potential class action lawsuit where they're arguing that unknown to consumers, automakers have been sharing information on their driving behavior with the insurance industry. As a result, some insurance rates have been nearly twice as much. The truth is that's just the tip of the iceberg. Companies and data brokers alike are actively selling our personal information online and it's a huge business. Along those lines, $2.7 billion was lost to imposter scams in 2023 and there were over 2.5 million reports of fraud. Most of that happened from nefarious actors getting individuals personal data from those data brokers. The good news is there's an easy way out of this giant mess and that's signing up for Delete Me yesterday. Now yes, they're the sponsor of this video, but I would gladly recommend them even if they were not. Delete Me saves you tens if not hundreds of hours contacting every data broker and getting them to remove your personal information. Now, before agreeing to partner with Delete Me, I spent the weekend researching them, watching nearly every YouTube video about Delete Me to ensure they're a trustworthy company. They're based in the United States. They've been doing this over a decade and this is the only thing they focus on. You get detailed reports every quarter. Yes, they continually check to ensure your data stays off the internet. In my most recent report in February, Delete Me reviewed over 4,000 listings and removed over 30. The report also shows you the status of every data broker and whether the removal is in progress or complete. So if you want to do what you can to avoid those scam calls, phishing attempts, and identity theft, you can head to joindeleteme.com slash electrified to get 20% off using my code electrified. The link is below and as always, thank you for supporting the channel. Before sharing the next few items, it's important highlighting what Rohan said over the weekend, media speculation and false reporting exists everywhere. India is unfortunately not immune to this global dynamic, at least as it relates to Tesla news. It would have been nice to know exactly what he was referring to, but this news item came after that post. Apparently, Tesla is now looking for its first showroom location in India, specifically in New Delhi and Mumbai. Tesla wants to begin with a showroom between three and 5,000 square feet, as well as with a service hub in each city. Tesla execs started looking at locations last month and have held talks with several real estate developers as they look at potential high street and mall sites. The source said Tesla is keen to begin construction soon so that the showrooms can open in 2024. Given the upcoming Elon meeting with Narendra Modi, the right hand drive production coming out of Giga Berlin and India lowering those import tariffs, this one certainly checks out. This news item was also after Rohan said what he said, Tesla has struck a strategic deal with Tata Electronics to acquire semiconductor chips for global operations. Operations. The details of the deal, however, remain undisclosed. When it comes to these lower import tariffs in India, they said a maximum of 40,000 EVs with an annual cap of no more than 8,000 would be allowed if the investment amounts to $800 million or more, with the option to carry over unused annual import limits. Tensions across the world which have caused shortage of chip supply across the globe, and that's something that Tesla would like to avert. And there is a new entrant, Tata Groups, uh, Tata Electronics, which is going to start manufacturing while the manufacturing facilities are under construction right now, the next year. But in advance, they could be tying up and securing the chip supply uh, to avert any supply chain risks in the future. For now, it's worth noting that neither Tesla nor Tata has confirmed this agreement. Tata Electronics has hired 50 to 60 top experts from abroad in recent months to boost its chip business. The company has chip making factories in Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, and Assam, and plans to expand across India. In case you were wondering, the Tata Group is this main umbrella of a large conglomerate that yes, both Tata Electronics and Tata Motors both fall under. And according to Indian minister Piyush Goyal, he said Elon sees India not only as a lucrative market, but also as a strategic base for serving global markets, aka another export hub. Piyush also confirmed Elon does plan to visit India on April 21st and the 22nd. 
We did not get any other details from this article about Elon planning to set up an entire ecosystem of Tesla in India, but I would imagine they wanna save most of the announcements for after Elon actually meets with Narendra Modi. I'd wait for confirmation on the chip deal, but Tesla having some diversification when it comes to semiconductor supply, at least geographically, is certainly not a bad thing. I'm sure most of you have seen the Monroe video on the Cybertruck battery pack, but in case you missed it, Sandy thinks this 33 millimeters or so of space between the bottom of the cells and the bottom of the pack is actually a crush zone of sorts that he dubbed as brilliant. He said it serves two main purposes, an area for gases to vacate, and if owners are off-roading and hit a giant rock or something, they're less likely to pierce and damage the cells themselves. Sandy also said Tesla had some clever ideas and was really impressed with the flood ports and the release valves on this pack. I'd encourage you to watch the whole thing, it's below. So if you were hoping for a double-decker 4680 pack, in the Cybertruck, I would not be holding my breath. The US and the UK placed some sanctions on some Russian metals, specifically aluminum, nickel, and copper, which caused prices on the LME to spike in the near term. However, these curbs don't prevent Russia from selling its metals to buyers outside the US or the UK, and they don't restrict the vast majority of the global trade in metals. That's because most of that trading happens directly between miners, traders, and manufacturers rather than through the LME. Something to be aware of, but in my opinion, it should not have an outsized impact on Tesla's acquisition prices because a lot of their metal deals, as far as we know, roughly 90% are done on long-term deals. For whatever it may be worth, Elon did change his profile picture on X to his face, and we have this auto label at the bottom. Speculate away. As Sawyer highlighted, the discounts on Model Y inventory vehicles are now lower than they were before. Thus, inventory Model Y is now roughly 8% more expensive. Here we have it, the upheaval currently at Tesla. It starts off with an email that we believe was from Elon. Tesla has made the decision to reduce their headcount by more than 10% globally. Elon said Tesla has made the difficult decision to reduce our headcount by more than 10% globally. Nothing I hate more, but it must be done. This will enable us to be lean, innovative, and hungry for the next growth phase cycle. It seems like the employees that were actually being laid off got a second email confirming their departure. In that second email, Tesla said, you will receive detailed info regarding severance, benefits continuation, and separation documents within 48 hours. Elon did say, it's extremely important to look at every aspect of the company for cost reductions and increasing productivity. Yes, layoffs are always unfortunate. In this case, we may have upwards of 15,000 people, a majority of which may have actually been blindsided by the news. But the harsh reality is that layoffs are a part of capital and a part of working at Tesla. In a prior life, I was also unexpectedly laid off and it turned out to be one of the best things that ever happened to me career-wise. I do wanna add, this is Tesla's biggest layoff by far. If you go back to 2022, that 10% layoff was only of salaried employees, which I believe translated to about 3% of the global headcount at the time. So in this case, 10% of the global headcount, which was over 140,000 is not an an insignificant number. Some back of the napkin math, if you lay off 15,000 people and assume an average salary of about $65,000, that's $975 million in annual savings for Tesla. Now, yes, there's obviously a short-term cost in this scenario, specifically when it comes to all of the severance packages, but longer term, it will result in a significant cost savings for Tesla. I also don't think it's accurate to group this round of layoffs with all of the ones in the past that Tesla has done. I do think this one is slightly different, not just because it's significantly larger, but the ones in the past really did feel like trimming the fat, cutting off the low performers, something they do regularly, this one feels like more of a restructuring. In a restructuring, you can certainly still trim the fat and cut the low performers, but I think there's more going on here. For years, Elon has been talking about Tesla is really an AI and a robotics company, but the financials didn't really reflect that, at least they didn't break it down as such. It's pretty clear though, at this point, Elon is doubling down on autonomy, robotaxis, robotics, and AI. And the truth is there's going to be a bifurcation in the Tesla community in the camp that agrees with the decision and believes in that future and the other camp that does not. I do think it's disingenuous to not at least acknowledge the fact that there's a chance part of this move is because Elon and Tesla do see a more structural slowdown in EV demand, at least for the next six to 12 months. 
As I've said before, we may not really know until we get the Q2 data to find out if Q1 was just an outlier or a sign of things to come. I really don't wanna come off as insensitive to these thousands of real people with real lives that were most likely upended at the blink of an eye. As Elon said, it was a heartbreaking decision, but it was something that he believed needed to be done. The silver lining for these folks is that having Tesla on your resume should make you a pretty attractive candidate in the market. Replying to Farzad, Elon did say about every five years, we need to reorganize and streamline the company for the next phase of growth. In addition to cutting costs for Tesla, Elon also cited the duplication of roles that need to be eliminated. One user on Reddit that had been laid off said the project he was working on was critical to certain features of the Cybertruck and later in the thread, he said it was PowerShare. Plain and simple, this round of layoffs feels like a necessary evil for Tesla to refocus as it gears up for this next wave of growth. And historically, Tesla has always been in the top five of the most attractive employers in the United States. For 2023, according to Universum, they were number five. I would note Elon has been posting about politics more prolifically for at least one to two years before these results came in. As far as we know, there's no Tesla hiring freeze right now, so all of those job listings on the careers page are still viable. Just real quick, if any of you watching are one of those Tesla employees, I salute you, thank you for all of your contributions to Tesla, and if I can ever help with your next endeavor, don't hesitate to reach out. Now, separately, we have Drew Baglino mentioning that after 18 years at Tesla, he's deciding to retire. He said he has no concrete plans beyond spending more time with my family and young kids. Elon said, thanks for everything you've done for Tesla. Few have contributed as much as you. And Drew said, thank you for always pushing us to do our best work from first principles. It's the only way to unlock the art of the possible. Let me make this clear up front. Drew Baglino leaving Tesla is in no way a good thing for Tesla. But it's also true that Drew leaving Tesla does not need to be some sign of something catastrophic happening at Tesla. So is Drew really leaving on his own? Was he pushed out over some sort of disagreement? Ultimately, we'll probably never know. And I think speculating about that is a foolish errand. So yeah, Tesla has absolutely lost a gem in Drew Baglino. It'd be great to see him stay at Tesla for decades, but honestly, 18 years working for Elon at Tesla in a high stress environment is crazy. I don't think it's a stretch to say that most people wouldn't last five years working at Tesla. It's probably worth mentioning, Baglino has netted about $96 million from periodic share sales since he was appointed a senior VP at Tesla. AKA, that's a base line of what Drew Baglino is working with, having secured an incredible record at Tesla. Can we really blame him for wanting to spend some time with his family? And the truth is that could be all there was to the story. As I said, there could definitely be more to the story, but right now we just don't know. And Tesla is going to be in prove it mode for the next 12 months. Responding to Galley, Elon said, after taking a well-deserved break, Drew will no doubt go on to do great things. I look forward to following what he does next. Sure, maybe publicly Elon and Drew are covering things up a bit, but it seems like Elon and Drew are still on good terms. A quick aside, most recently, Drew was the senior vice president of powertrain and energy engineering. So no, he did not get fired due to Tesla's slower sales. And while I stand by my belief that Drew leaving Tesla is not a good thing for Tesla, I also believe that it could be a good time for him to leave. He was one of the leads for Tesla's 4680 project. Now sure, they've fallen short of some of the battery day aspirations, but those were insane to begin with. Despite falling short of astronomical expectations, for Tesla to have done what they have so far with the 4680 progress is astounding. It's also undeniable that Tesla has some of the best powertrain technology in the world. Megapack is scaling, albeit maybe slower than we would expect, but many of those bottlenecks are not Drew's fault. And of course, we just got the updated Powerwall 3. Drew was also accountable for Tesla's charging and energy business. Tesla charging has become the North American charging standard and the V4 rollout is well 
underway and Tesla's energy business now has higher gross margins than the auto business. Thus, looking at all the different business lines Drew was overseeing, they all seem to be in very strong places. AKA, it could actually be a good time for Drew to step aside. And think about it from his shoes. Is he ready to gear up for the next five to 10 years at Tesla as they transition to autonomy and robots and a heavier AI focus? As incredible as Drew's contributions have been, he may not be the right person to be the lead engineer for the next phase. And more importantly, even if he was, he has to be emotionally invested for the next five to 10 years for Tesla to roll out what they have in the queue. From that standpoint, it would actually be better for Tesla to have somebody new in these lead engineering roles that are committed for the next five to 10 years. If you've been around, you know I do not throw around this word lightly, but Drew's career at Tesla has been nothing short of epic. He will absolutely be missed. We wish him the best in his future endeavors, but this does not have to mean that Tesla is now doomed. And you know what they say about what happens when it rains. We also have Rohan Patel saying that after eight years at Tesla, he is also leaving. His plans are to be a recess monitor for his second grade daughter, practice violin, go to a bunch of bucket list sporting events and take his patient wife on some long intended travel. Elon said, thanks for everything you've done for Tesla, much appreciated. I'd argue losing Rohan right now is also a pretty significant loss for Tesla. He's been really the main source of P for Tesla over the past few months. He's been providing so much clarity and insight and context around these news stories that we oftentimes don't really have. Now, no disrespect at all to Rohan, but I'm just saying replacing him is going to be a bit easier. It's really just a matter of being informed at the company. Yes, that's probably a negligent oversimplification, but I'm just saying Rohan training a replacement would be a bit easier than Drew training a replacement because having an engineer engineering mind can't always be taught. Whereas for policy and business development, I would imagine Tesla has a lot of standard operating procedures. Just a reminder, this yellow line right here is when JB Straubel decided to leave Tesla. Everybody was calling doom and gloom, and this is what happened with Tesla stock in the ensuing months. This second yellow line is when Andre Carpathy decided to leave Tesla. This one I'm not really showing from a stock perspective, but rather everything that's happened with Tesla autonomy since his departure. Archer, namely version 12. There was some speculation out there that Ashok was also leaving Tesla, but for now he still has his Tesla badge on X and no word about his departure. As far as we know, Ashok is still with Tesla. I can't confirm, but whole Mars did say Tesla all hands internal call at 10 a.m. Pacific time today. This would make a lot of sense after mass layoffs and executive departures. Morale can definitely be low at the company. People can be overwhelmed with new bigger workloads. So it seems to me like it would be critical for Elon to rally the troops right now and boost morale. Getting everybody that's left refocused and excited about the future is a very important move. We've been saying it on the channel now all year, it's most likely going to be a very challenging and turbulent 2024 for Tesla. This upheaval at Tesla just reminds me of the quote, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, I've never worked at Tesla, but having followed the company pretty closely now for over a decade, Tesla has some dogs as employees. If you're not familiar with that reference, it's really just people that are ready and willing to grind. We have to acknowledge we're pretty close to peak uncertainty when it comes to Tesla as a company, not just for Tesla stock. And I know we're not anywhere near Tesla going bankrupt like we were during the Model 3 production ramp. But what I mean by uncertainty is what the future of Tesla will look like. Despite Tesla foreshadowing this has been their future for years, now that they're currently doubling down on autonomy and robotics and AI, that does bring a whole new level of uncertainty compared to a company that predominantly makes and sells vehicles and energy products. Tesla's obviously still going to do the latter part and they will continue to do it incredibly well, but it's very clear that the focus at the company is indeed now shifting. And at the end of the day, not everybody in the Tesla community is going to share or even support that same vision, but ultimately that's what makes a market. And at the risk of stating the obvious, now we're going to get some new blood, some new energy, some new perspectives, and hopefully a refreshed organization focusing on their renewed goals. I can guarantee you there are some very hungry Tesla employees and some engineers that have been working under Drew now for years that are itching to be promoted. Opportunities are now opening.
Zipping through a few more, there are some regulators when it comes to autonomous vehicles that are saying they have not received any applications for permits from Tesla. This coming from two agencies in California and also from Arizona and Nevada. For context, it took Waymo eight months to get its initial CPUC permit. Arizona, another state that has regulations for autonomous vehicles, has not gotten paperwork from Tesla, and neither has Nevada according to a department spokesperson, but he also said if Tesla was interested in getting certified or permitted in Nevada, they could likely do so in short order. Although we have the RoboTaxi unveil on August 8th, I don't think we see that vehicle on the road until the end of 2025 at the earliest. So in my opinion, Tesla has plenty of time to get the permits it needs for those few states that actually have regulations. And even if they didn't, Tesla could always launch in other states. Piedmont Lithium, who is a Tesla supplier after two plus years, was finally approved for its mine in North Carolina. Carolina. This mine is not fully greenlit just yet. They still need to obtain state air quality and wastewater permits. But for now, this is certainly a big win as there was a ton of public pushback against this project. We also have another report from Electric citing multiple sources. They're saying they can confirm the program, the $25,000 Tesla, which was internally called NV9, was indeed postponed despite what Elon said about it not being canceled. They're saying the project is effectively scratched right now as Tesla is putting all resources into its self-driving effort. The sources said Elon told Tesla's team in Austin in December of last year that NV9, this expansion at Giga Austin, was indeed a priority for 2024, but this project was recently completely defunded and many people involved in it were laid off as part of the round of layoffs announced today. Instead, Elon said he wanted Tesla to focus on the south expansion of Giga Texas, which is going going to house a giant data center for the RoboTaxi project. Lastly, according to those sources, that project for the RoboTaxi data center is already behind schedule and there's serious doubt it can be completed by the end of August. Bear in mind, they're saying the end of August when the RoboTaxi unveil is the beginning of August, so these two don't necessarily have to be related. Tesla can, of course, unveil the RoboTaxi product itself separately from this data center at Giga Austin. So who knows if this is true? As I I've said before, I don't think we need to make this black and white. I believe Tesla is going to have optionality with the next gen platform. So if things continue to progress very well and quickly for FSD, then sure, keep pushing the robotaxi movement. If the unknown unknowns come into play or any other hiccups, then I think Tesla can re-pivot back to focusing on a $25,000 model. But as I said last time around, if this is ever confirmed by Elon or the team, Wall Street is absolutely not going to favor this in the short term. As a long-term investor, that shouldn't really matter, but I just want everybody to be prepared. Joe Tetmeyer shared some pictures of a bunch, hundreds of Cybertrucks at Giga Texas, but also a large number of Quicksilver Model Ys. I did ask him on X, what's the deal with all of those? He said, good question. I know they've been testing the paint shop for this color for a while, but obviously it's now much more than a test. Seems like they're building up a large inventory for some reason. The license plate holders are US sized, so not for export, it seems. Quicksilver is a fan favorite, so North America getting that option and potentially others would be a nice boost. Tesla stock closed the day at $161.48, down 5.59%, which shouldn't have come as a surprise as the NASDAQ was down 1.79%. It was a red day across our list and Rivian and Polestar were both down 8% or more. It was an average volume day for Tesla, trading about 3 million shares above the average volume the past 30 days. Don't forget, check out Delete Me linked below if you're interested. They're a great company working on pushing back the darkness. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did. You can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.